Good morning. Good morning. Unusual day and week, and we don't know what is going to lie before us, but I, I pray we've all come together to worship and and just to uh, just focus on God and, and His goodness to us. And I know I know it's hard because it's it's right now our minds are elsewhere and that's a struggle. But I pray that you're able to to do that this morning, and then we'll uh, we'll leave here looking and listening for opportunities to serve others. Let's pray. Father, we're thankful to come in your house. God, we just, uh, we just praise you for your presence in our life and your, our daily walk. God, we pray right now that you would just meet with us in a special way this morning where there's many needs we're aware of throughout our uh, Western North Carolina and all the way to Florida. God, we just, we just uh, ask that you... Uh, just meet needs and, and make people turn to you and, and, and be encouraged by you. And God, help us to do our part to listen and, and help any way we can. We do pray for our service this morning, God. We pray that you would just uh, lead us and guide us and uh, be with our brother as he stands before us. God, just challenge our hearts through your word. Be with those that come to sing and, and, and our pianists and all that take part in the service, God. We just pray that you would use them in a mighty way. Again, Father, lead us and guide us. Help us to uh, uh, listen to your word and then take it out to others. Father, we, we just pray this in Christ's name. Amen. If you have a bulletin, just a few things that are going on we want to remind you of. And uh, we, uh, we do have uh, this afternoon or th this evening, we'll have uh, a couple of special things going on here at the church. We, we have... Evening worship at 5:30, but this afternoon from two to four, there is a, bri a bridal shower for Stephanie and Jack that will take place here at the church. Hey, and, Rose. Yep. We might not, we're waiting. We're going to meet after church with them to see if they want to do it. Okay. Okay. All right. And if if you are planning to attend, you might want to hang back and find out what that answer is because we know it's a little difficult to communicate with each other right now. So. Just be patient, and uh, that, that'll be decided pretty quickly after church. Remind you that the church Wi-Fi, we've, we've uh, changed it to uh, where guests can reach it. If you or someone you know needs to pull up out here in the church parking lot and, and utilize that for communication, uh, it's there. It's not going to cost them anything. It's uh, hopefully a service that will, will help some people be able to communicate and meet some needs there. And, uh, we just need to get that word out so each one of us individually, it's there for you to use if you need it and tell others about it too. Um, this afternoon at four, church council, uh, we are going to meet and what we would like to invite uh, th those that need to try to be there would be a representative, hopefully the chairperson, but at least uh, if not the chairman, then maybe a representative of a committee that maybe you serve on to, uh, but all those committee chair people, if they possibly can, if you know you can't, then you can ask someone to represent you. We'll come together at four o'clock. It's a planning, planning session for the next three months of the church calendar, and we get things on there, and then we can plan toward them, and, and, uh, uh, it's, it's an important time, and we, we encourage you to come out and take part in the church council that way. Um, Monday evening uh, at 6.30, there is a women's Bible study that will continue here. Again, just you just have to go by the schedule and uh, not really looking to alter things right now. Again, if something's called off, you may show up and find out when you show up that that's the case because we can't send a one call and we can't communicate with each other. So... Uh, just plan to come to these things and uh, again be flexible Wednesday night business meeting Bible study at 7 uh, next Sunday uh, the youth night uh, will begin back for the new school year and uh, those that are involved with that be in prayer for them and all of our youth attending that uh, looking ahead October 13th the old fashioned Sunday lunch on round top again We'll just plan toward it, and we'll we'll see how things, if things change between now and then, but uh, something fun to look forward to and uh, be planning on. Our missions offering is continuing. We encourage you to support that, and uh, 
now we've experienced the needs in our part of the state. We've always gone and helped in the other end of the state. Um, some of those folks will be rolling into Western North Carolina to provide um, food and clothing, washing clothes, and just a variety of things. So um, our, our missions, our state missions offering is very important to uh, support and aid those, those that work in that ministry. Any announcement that I've forgotten? Job with regard to that. Baptist men, they're already up here. Uh, food truck, from what I understand, is Haywood County now. Uh, I saw Phil Preston and his wife last night. Didn't talk to them, but they were going through save more and had their shirts on, so I'm sure the feeding truck is up and going on there. Uh, as we learn more, we'll make you aware if we can. If you learn things, help spread that word to your neighbors that are going to be in need because this, this is, they provide services to truly people that need, need a warm meal, need some clothing cleaned and uh, just uh, showers and a variety of things. So, uh, and I don't know how to tell you to get in touch with us, but obviously the, the pastor and the deacons of the church are are willing to serve and assist you and um, I don't know send a carrier pigeon or something I don't know how we gonna communicate but we uh, we need to be there for each other and if you if you learn of a a uh, serious need or whatever make someone aware of it if it's a fire department or if it's a deputy or if you need to drive up to our houses and say hey we we know someone has a has a serious need please please uh, do that all right we will continue with our service i'm glad you're here this morning if you'll get your handbooks out we'll sing page 136 we'll sing all four verses to are you washed in the blood it will also be on the screen page 136 
second song this morning, we're just going to use the screen. Um, we're going to sing, Thank You, Lord, for Your Blessings on Me. So it's one of our choir songs, but I feel like every, most people know it. So we'll be using the screen, um, and we'll sing both verses straight through.
not of the, what was going to take place. Jesus was troubled as he looked at the, what thought about what was going on. He took the three most trusted with him. See, Jesus took these three a little bit farther. Peter, James, and John took these most trusted disciples, told those eight to stay back, and he took them a little bit farther. Boy, he had confidence in him. Does Jesus have confidence in you today? Thought about myself. Boy, I hope Jesus has confidence in me. I hope that he would look at Doug Matthews and say, I'm going to take you a little farther along than somebody else. I have confidence in you. Jesus had confidence in Peter, James, and John. He told them, he said, Tarry ye here and watch with me. Jesus asked these three to watch, did he not? He said, watch with me. Stay alert. Keep on your guard. Pray with me. We see that human side of Jesus. He needed some support. He needed some encouragement. We all need encouragement at times. Folks, you never know who you can touch when you call and check on somebody. And God puts somebody on your heart. Go by and check on them. Jesus needed some support here. He took these three trusted disciples a little bit farther. He didn't ask for much, did he? Just watch with me. Pray with me. Be alert was all that Jesus asked. For his disciples to do. Sooner or later, each and every one of us will need some support. We will need some encouragement in life. Jesus needed that. We see that, the human side of Jesus, right here. The Bible says, verse 39, And he went a little further. We need to think about how far Jesus has already come at this time. He has come from glory to Gethsemane. Think about how far Jesus has traveled this, this, this time. Born in a manger, born in Bethlehem, born from a, a virgin's womb, born to poor parents. For 33 and a half years, Jesus lived a simple life. He worked from that carpenter's bench, doing hard manual labor, worked from the sweat of his brow, folks. And then, for three and a half years during his ministry, Jesus went about teaching. He went about preaching. He went about healing the sick, feeding the hungry, raising the dead. Boy, Jesus went about doing good, didn't he? He was about the Father's business. But now Jesus' work is almost done. Boy, it's almost over. He's getting ready to go to the cross. To die for the sins of the world. Almost a few hours he would hang between the heavens and the earth and shed his blood for the sins of the world. The Bible says he went a little farther. Aren't you glad, folks, that he went a little bit farther today? Aren't you glad that he left the splendor of glory? He could have turned back at any time. But boy, I can see him heading now. He kept going a little bit farther. For me and you. Jesus did not have to, folks. He could have called for more than 12 legions of angels and put a stop to it at any time. But boy, Jesus kept pressing on. Boy, can you see him as his hourglass of time was running out? He knew each step that he was taking, he was getting closer to the cross. Yet Jesus kept going a little bit farther. Aren't you glad today that Jesus didn't stop? Aren't you glad that he kept pressing on to that cross for my sin, your sins, and the sins of the world? Boy, he went a little farther. The Bible says, then he fell on his face and prayed. God's son fell down on his knees, buried his face in the ground, and he prayed. What an example for us to do, folks. Are we too proud today to kneel and pray to an almighty God? Are we? I know that we can pray in the bed. I know that we can pray in the car. We can pray anywhere. But boy, I thought about myself. Boy, when I get troubled with something and I want to get that prayer through, boy, I drop down on my knees. I believe that changes stuff, folks. God's son got down on his knees. And pray to his father. I think that needs to be an example to us today. Luke tells us, chapter 22, verse 44. 
And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat was as it were great drops of blood falling down to the ground. Now even though it was a cool night, you go on and read that Peter warned himself by the devil's fire. But Jesus was in so much stress and agony that when he prayed, the blood vessels burst in his head and great drops of blood mingled with that sweat run out on the ground, folks. That's the condition that our Lord and Savior was in. You know, we think about the physical pain that Jesus endured. What about the mental pressure was on our Lord and Savior? The blood started flowing in the garden, folks. And it flowed a little bit more, a whole lot more, when he shed his blood on the cross for our sins. Jesus, he, he suffered like no one has ever suffered. The Bible says Jesus prayed. Says, oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. You go on and read three times he prayed this. He would go pray and come back and check on his disciples and what would they be doing? Boy, they'd be asleep. He said, just watch with me. Just stay with me. He just wanted some support. Well, they must have been tired. Well, we all get tired at times. But they didn't mean nothing by it. Three times he prayed that, let this cup pass from me. What was in the cup, folks? What did Jesus dread that was in this cup? Now, we can. what about knowing in advance what was going to take place? Jesus knew exactly what was going to take place. He knew that the religious crowd was going to rough him up, beat him up. He knew that those Roman soldiers was going to beat on him. He they knew that they were going to scourge him with that cat of nine tails. Jesus knew all that. He knew that Roman soldier was going to strip him naked, nail him to the cross. You read in Isaiah that he was not even recognizable. That's how much our Lord and Savior suffered on the cross. But that wasn't, folks, what Jesus dreaded. That cross, them Roman nails, is not what our Lord and Savior dreaded. You read into this, according to history, thousands, if not millions, of martyrs died. They ran boldly, stood boldly, as they was crucified for the cause of Christ. His disciples, all but John, were martyred, folks. I read that some were even burned on the cross. It wasn't those Roman nails that our Savior dreaded. So what did he dread? What was in the cup that our Savior dreaded? What was in that cup to cause Jesus to pray in agony in the garden until his sweat became great drops of blood? What was in that cup to make him cry out on his knees to his Father? He cried out, please let this cup pass from me, Father. I don't want to touch this cup, Father. I don't want anything of this cup. Can you hear Jesus crying out in prayer asking the Father, let this cup pass from me. I know my hour has come, Father. I know this is my destiny. I know that this has been appointed from the eternity's past. But oh, Father, please, is there any other way, Father, let this cup pass from me. You see the human side of Jesus. Boy, he dreaded the cross, didn't he? He dreaded this cup. And I'm talking about the cross. I ain't talking about the nails. I'm talking about what was going to be placed upon him. What was in that cup that caused our Savior so much pain and sorrow, folks? What was in that cup? I'll tell you what was in that cup. God's wrath, the curse of God over sin was in that cup. God's Son, Jesus, someone that knew no sin, became the sin bearer. Folks, my sin, your sin, and the sins of the whole world was placed upon Jesus. Think of the weight of that sin. Hanging there on the nails. That's what I thought about. Those nails holding him up. It wasn't the nails. It was the weight of our sin that was placed on our Lord and Savior. Everything leading up to the cross. Boy, it caused Jesus a lot of pain. He suffered. 
this. Now, boy, that scourging, it hurt the Lord. And so that human side, he felt all that, folks. But this is what Jesus dreaded. The wrath of the Father being poured out on him as he hung between the heavens of the earth, folks. Every wretched, every vile sin that has ever been committed, that ever would, would be committed, guess what? Was placed on our Lord and Savior at this time. Think about the weight. All that sin. Someone that knew no sin, that had never committed any sin. Jesus became a sinner for me and for you folks. That's what Jesus dreaded. Jesus became the sin bearer. He bore our sins. For a short period of time, God the Father, God the Son, they were separated. That's the reason Jesus cried out on the cross, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? God the Father had to turn his back on his son. Folks. You read on in God's word that there's a darkness coming over the land from noon until three. Boy, God turned the lights off, didn't he? As his son hung and died, bearing the sins of the world. The wrath of God over my sin. The wrath of God over your sin. The wrath of God of the sins of the world were placed upon our Lord and Savior. Why would the sins have to be placed on our Savior, folks? Because God is just. God is holy. God is righteous. And sin has to be judged. But His Son was willing to come. Willing to take our sins, place all the sins of the world on himself and become the sin bearer. Jesus paid that awful sin debt on Calvary when he hung and died in our place. God's wrath over sin was satisfied. When Jesus said it is finished on the cross, God's wrath over sin was satisfied. Aren't you glad that Jesus was willing to come, folks? Aren't you glad that God's wrath over sin can be satisfied today through His Son, through the blood that He shed on the cross? It is a free gift to us today. But I wonder, do we really understand? Do we really believe in the wrath of God? Let's bring that down. Do we really believe in the wrath of God? We ask people, are you saved? What are we saved from, folks? Think about what we are saved. We are saved from the wrath of Almighty God. That's what that means. Would John 3.16 really mean anything if we didn't understand the wrath of God that we're saved from? Would that, would that not mean more if you really understand the wrath of God? The word wrath means to be heated up. To burn with fury. To be bitter. Full of venom. Well, I read it's fatal when it's unleashed by Almighty God. Have we not stripped God from His powers today, folks? Have we not stripped God from His holiness and His righteousness? I thought about myself. If we're not real careful, we will promote all the time that God is a God of love, which He is. He loved us enough to send His Son down here and die on a cross for the sins of the world. But are we telling people the other side of the story? God is a God of wrath. If you reject His Son that came and died on the cross, His wrath is going to be poured out on you one day. Do we forget that part of it? I'm afraid that we do to a certain extent. God is holy. He's just. He has to judge sin. What are you talking about, preacher? We have example after example in God's Word. Giving us a picture of God judging the world. His wrath being poured out. What about in the days of Noah? When God destroyed the world with a flood. You read and study that Noah preached for 120 years, giving people ample opportunity to come and be saved, folks. 
But sooner or later, God had enough. And His wrath was poured out on this old world. God shut the door. Has God not given us ample opportunity today over 2,000 years for people to come and be saved? What about Sodom and Gomorrah? Another picture of God's wrath being poured out. Boy, God looked down from His throne and He saw the wickedness of Sodom and Gomorrah destroyed that wicked city with fire and brimstone. Folks. What about the condition that we're in today? As God looks down from His throne, what does He think about all that's going on in our world today? Once again, is God's wrath not, not brewing? Is it not growing? Boy, I believe Jesus could come any day and God would deal with sin, folks. God's wrath is going to be poured out again on this old world one day. We read in the Scripture that wrath is building. Psalms 75 verse 7 and 8 says, But God is the judge. He putteth down one and setteth up another. Verse 8 says, For in the hand of the Lord there is a cup, and the wine is red, it is full of mixture, and he poureth out of the same. But the dregs thereof, all the wicked of the earth, shall wring them out and drink them. Do you not think this old world, once again, is getting ripe for judgment, folks? What does God think about all the sin that's going on in our world today? Boy, I believe God's wrath is growing each and every day. How much longer could it last? Is God going to have to go back and apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah? He will not do that, folks. God's wrath is going to be poured out on this old world one day. I want to read you a little scripture found in Revelation chapter 14 concerning God's wrath. I know it's a lot of scripture, but I want to tie this in. Uh, Revelation 14, verse 14. It says, And I looked, and behold, a white cloud. And upon the cloud one sat like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the temple crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud. Listen, thrust in thy sickle and reap, for the time is come for thee to reap. For the harvest of the earth is ripe. And he sat on the cloud, thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. And another angel came out of the temple, which is in heaven, he also having a sharp sickle. And another angel came out from the altar which had power over fire and cried with a loud cry to him that had the sharp sickle, saying, Listen, thrust in thy sharp sickle and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, for the grapes are fully ripe. What about the grapes of wrath, folks? That's what we're looking at here, the grapes of wrath. And the angel thrust in the sickle into the earth and gathered the vine of the earth and cast it into the great winepress of the wrath of God. And the winepress was trodden without the city, and blood came out of the winepress even unto the horse's bridle by the space of a thousand six hundred furlongs. What about blood flowing? Five feet high. Folks, that's, how, that's, the, that's the height of a horse's bridle. What about it flowing? This is 180 miles, the, the width of Israel from north to south. You see what's going to happen one day. The church is going to be raptured out, and God's wrath is going to be poured out upon this old world. How are you going to escape the wrath of God? You better have Jesus in your life. You better have Jesus. The only way we're going to escape the wrath of God is through that blood. When Jesus looks at you today, can he see the blood that's been applied to your heart's door? Boy, if not, you've got a problem. He better see the blood. Let's go back to our text. Matthew verse 20, chapter 26, verse 39. Jesus said, let this cup pass from me. And then without even pausing, listen to what Jesus says. He said, nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. In the hour of agony, the answer was clear. Can you hear the father speaking to his son? 
son, you're going to have to drink this cup. This is the, your purpose, son. This is the reason that you come down to this old sinful world to die on the cross for the sin. Of the world. You're going to have to drink this cup, son. Isaiah 53 and 10 says, Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. That word bruise means to be crushed. It pleased the Lord to crush his only Son, why did it please the Lord to crush His only Son? Because through the death on the cross, when all the sins of the world was placed on our Lord and Savior, it brought salvation to a lost and dying world. It pleased the Father. He provided a way of escape. How many fathers would crush their son? It pleased the Father to crush His only Son because He was provide no way of escape. So whosoever will can come and take of the water of life freely, folks. Boy, is that not good. God's wrath over sin is satisfied. Now after we get saved... We can say that we are justified. Boy, I like that word justified. Boy, don't you like that, that word justification? Just as though we have never sinned. That's what God sees when He looks at us after we've been saved. That blood's been applied to our heart's door. He don't see how sorry Doug Mathis is. He sees that blood. Just as though we have never seen. That's the ultimate price that Jesus paid on the cross. When we accept Him as our Savior, boy, God the Father, He looks at us and we are as white as snow. Folks, do we ever do we think about that enough? The price that Jesus paid. What was in the cup that Jesus drank? Jesus drank my wrath. He drank your wrath. That should have been Doug Mathis drinking that wrath of God. Should have been your cup that you should have been drinking. But because Jesus loved us enough, he come and drank the cup for me. Boy, I'm glad that he drank my cup. Boy, we needed an intercessor, didn't we? Job said, I need a daysman. Somebody that would come and intercede between me and God. Folks, we have that daysman. We have that intercessor. His name is Jesus. He died on the cross for our sins. Aren't you glad that you have an intercessor today? Aren't you glad that you saved? I hope everyone here is saved today. If not, boy, it would be a good time to come, wouldn't it? We're getting ready to celebrate communion. Boy, it would be a good time to come and you be prepared where you could take part of communion. Folks, if you're lost, don't take part of this communion. That's a serious thing that we're looking back and remembering the blood, the pain, and the suffering that our Lord and Savior died on the cross for our sins. God's wrath is coming. God's wrath is building. Would you be ready today? If Jesus was to come out back for the church, would you be ready? Would you get to go? Would you get be caught up into the air with the church folks? It is going to be an awful time if you're left behind. It's going to be a time like we've never experienced before when God's wrath, we're talking about God's wrath being poured out on the whole wide world this time. Aren't you glad that you've been saved? Aren't you glad that the blood's been applied to your life? That we don't have to go through the wrath of God, folks. Now, God will chastise one of His. I've been whipped up many a time. But boy, that chastisement, that's a loving Father whipping on you. We're talking about the wrath of Almighty God being poured out on the world. You will either be pardoned through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, or you will be cast into that great lake of fire one day, folks. That fire. Think about that great lake of fire. Cast into that lake. Think about sinking, falling down, struggling, drowning, 
and burning throughout eternity. Could it get any worse than that? Sinking, falling, burning throughout eternity. It doesn't have to be that way, folks. Jesus paid your sin debt on the cross. All you have to do is accept him as your Savior. Boy, I'm glad that I'm saved. Jesus drank my cup. Today as we take part of communion, let's think back. Let's always remember, folks, the cup that Jesus drank. It wasn't that cross. It was our sins that Jesus had placed upon him. And his father turning his back. See, they, his father never had turned his back on him. All those martyrs that had ran forward boldly to be crucified, they had that peace that passed all understanding. Guess what Jesus had? His father had to turn his back on him. Jesus had to die alone, just like he was the most wretched sinner that's ever been, folks. That's what Jesus dreaded. He dreaded his father. He'd never been separated from the father. His father turned his back on him as he died for the sins of the world. And he said, it is finished. The plan of salvation is finished. God had provided a way of escape. Whosoever will can come. As we stand, I'm going to give you an opportunity. There might be a need. To, somebody needs to come and pray. Before we have communion. Boy, would you not like to come? If, you're, if you've never been saved, would you like to come and make things right? But God's wrath is coming. Boy, I'm glad that I don't have to experience God's wrath. Because Jesus drank my cup. When he hung and died on the cross. Would there be someone out of God's will? You have sin in your life. Would you like to get rid of that sin? Before you just take part of this, folks, it's dangerous. Would you like to get rid of any sin in your life? Before we take part in communion. If you're here lost today, think about it. God's wrath is going to be poured out one day. It's going to be too late. Day, still the day of grace. The door of God's grace, love, and mercy swung wide open today. Whosoever will can come. I'm glad that I'm saved. I'm glad Jesus drank my cup, folks. Every time that we have communion, let's not think about those little nails. That ain't what Jesus dreaded. He dreaded the sins of the world being placed upon him, folks. The sins of the world. The weight of sin. Jesus knew no sin. Yet he became sin for us today. Good for me to be here today. Good to be saved. We'll continue on in the service at this time. Good to be saved. Bible says I'm going to read from Mark chapter 14 and verse 22. The Bible says that as they did eat, Jesus took bread and blessed and break it and gave to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Go ahead, Grant. We'll, you want to bless the bread, brother?
read this verse again. You can't read it too much, can you? Think about this bread. Think about Jesus' body. He has suffered, folks, like no man has ever suffered. Unrecognizable. Beat to death as he was hanging there on the cross. Bible says, verse 22, And as they did eat, Jesus took bread and blessed and break it and gave to them. And he said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it. And he said unto them, This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many. Brother Rob, you want to give thanks to the blood, the wine that was shed. And he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it. And he said unto them, This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many. I 
I thank the Lord for that blood that was shed. Folks, like I said, that blood started flowing in the garden. Boy, and it flowed a little bit more as they scourged our Lord and Savior. And boy, it flowed a little bit more when they drove the nails in his hands and his feet. And boy, when that spear pierced his side, blood and water come out. Jesus paid the sin debt. Every drop of his blood, I believe, come out, folks. Why? To cover the sins of the world. Aren't you glad that you're saved today? Aren't you glad that Jesus drank the cup of wrath for you? But folks, I'm glad that I'm saved. Would they be a testimony at this time? Anyone want to say anything for the Lord? Are you thankful that you're saved today? Think about that wrath. If Jesus hadn't went a little that extra mile, hadn't went a little farther, I would have been a drink in that cup of God's wrath. Today, you would have been drinking that cup. But because Jesus was willing to go, he drank that cup for each and every one of us today. Anyone have a testimony? Yes. We need to wake up, don't we? God's trying to show us things, folks. I believe that with all my heart. Giving us every opportunity to be saved. To get our loved ones saved, our neighbors saved, our friends saved. One day, we, the world's going to cross a line. I believe that. God said, that's enough. I'm going to deal with this sin problem. God's going to deal with the sin problem one day, folks. Read in Revelation, the, the grapes of wrath. Well, they're going to be trodden out. And that blood's going to flow. That's not a fairy tale. That's actually going to happen one day. Boy, I'm glad. If you're saved, you're going to miss out on that today. Anyone else have anything you'd like to say for the Lord? Exactly. Yes. Yes. We serve a good God today. We do. Anyone else have anything to say? Tried. Yeah. Exactly. Amen. Yes. Yes. That wrath of God should motivate us, shouldn't it, Debbie? To get out there and try to reach all those folks. It's not saved. Anyone else have a prayer, request, testimony, or anything? Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Amen, Grant. That's what I was thinking of singing that song about. We're blessed or whatever. What about if we lost everything? Our homes destroyed, but we could still say that we're saved, folks. Is that not good? Lose everything, we still can have a smile on our face, knowing that we're a winner either way. We have that peace during times of trouble. What about all the people going through trouble now that doesn't have that peace that we have as Christians? Boy, I'm glad that I'm saved. Anyone else? Oh, it's good. It's good. We'll stand and be dismissed. It's been good to be in God's house. Father, we thank you for this good day that you blessed us with, Lord. We just thank you, Lord, that you was willing to send your son down here and die on a cross for our sin, Lord. It pleased you to crush him for our sins, Lord. And Father, I just thank you that you was willing for him to come. He didn't have to come, Lord, but you allowed him to come for our sins. 
Lord, we just want to thank you for that today, Lord. We just we never want to forget the price that was paid on Calvary, Lord. Pray that you'll just be with us as we go out these doors, Lord. We'll just try to reach those that are lost. Try to get them saved, Lord, before your wrath is poured out one day. Lord, I pray that you'll just be with all the ones that's struggling right now, that's going through the, the troubles and trials of life. Maybe they've lost everything, Lord. Pray that you just be with them, Lord. Pray that you be the ones that's out there working in this condition, this bad weather, Lord. Lord, we just love you and thank you for everything. For in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen.